Welcome to Cup of TV. While a whisper of war was growing into a cry in the 1930s, Americans celebrated their freedoms with swing dancing and swing music. Despite the woes of war, Americans continued to swing throughout the 1940s until Elvis the Pelvis pulsated with his rhythms of rock and roll in the 1950s. Although swing dancing and swing music never completely disappeared or died, it did go underground for a bit until it re-emerged in the 1990s with an explosion of energy and enthusiasm. In fact, Great White Way is witnessing crowds of young and old people rushing to the St. James Theatre where Swing, the Broadway musical, is playing. The St. James Theatre is located just a few steps away from Sardi's, a joint that has been jumping with figures of note since the 1920s. Today, we are taking tea at Sardi's restaurant with one such celebrity, whose credits include the film Footloose, the Broadway musical Titanic, and two Tony Award nominations. Who is this talented celebrity? None other than the director and choreographer of Swing, Ms. Lynn Taylor Corbett. Welcome to Cup of TV. Thank Lynn. you. It's delightful to be here. First of all, congratulations on your two Tony nominations oh, for Swing. Thank you very much. Best uh, musical direction and also or best director of a musical, mm -hmm. correct? And uh, best choreographer. Oh, yeah. Yes. Which is fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, what I know you're going on tour. Uh, mm -hmm. What can audiences expect when they come to swing? Well, I hope, you know, what, what people are coming to see, and they sometimes come a second time, is, is a, a celebration of, of our American folk dance. I mean, this is, this is a dance and music that arose out of our youth culture in the 30s and 40s, and it's diversified to include Latin swing, country western swing, east coast swing, west coast swing, um, you know, just this plethora of, of wonderful styles and joy, uh, wonderful music. And I think that um, the, the piece is crafted not as a review in a linear way, but as, as a giant party, an event, mm. so that all kinds of different things come at you in an unexpected way, including a bungee number and <laughs> swing in the air, which is great fun. It is great fun. Well, your nominations were for a Best Director of a Musical okay. and Best Choreography. Mm -hmm. And where does your primary passion lie? Does it lie in direction or in choreography or in dance mm -hmm. or something else? <laughs> <laughs> I think my passion is, um, is just getting wonderful stuff out on the stage. And, and um, I will always be in my heart a choreographer, but choreography morphs into directing if you're trying to make a whole shape. Um, because I love the spoken word. My father was a writer. I love music. And I think that um, for me to work with the dance and the song and, you know, the music at the same time is just wonderful. And the acting and creating characters, it's, it's very exciting. Well, how did it feel to be a, a character um, in the swing world, as it were, if your background is in ballet and jazz. In other words, I understand that your background That's is right. in ballet and jazz, That's right. but you were surrounded by all these swing dancers. How did it feel for you? Well, I, I, I think it was, um, I mean, I have such admiration for each of these couples and each of these styles and the people that have worked in these styles for all, you know, in, in some cases all their lives. And I felt my job was a, more of a master choreographer to give their their gift a context and to you know any any, any event in the theater, no matter what the style is, has a an arc that makes it pay off. And to to look at their work and help find that arc internally for their work. So I was a, a, a really a sort of collaborator in in the whole process. Well, what are your first recollections of swing? When were you first oh, introduced? Well, you know my. Dad, um, who had been at the war, uh, loved some of those songs, and we used to drive along in our car, and he would sing, and we would sing along, and mm. just learn the words. I didn't know they were swing songs, but I just remember them, you know, loving them. And then I, I really began to uh, become interested in the in the swing movement again with the emergence of the competitions, and the wonderful, amazing diversity of these uh, specialty people 
that we're beginning to morph swing into five and six and seven and nine or ten styles. I did notice in your show that there are very specialized forms of dancing taking place. What are you going to do when you go on the road? I mean, how do you duplicate these fabulous people? Well, that, that is indeed the problem I'm grappling with right now. Um, I, uh, you know, luckily I have some swing, what we call swing dancers, which are not swing dancers, but understudies. We call them swings on Broadway, that they swing in and do different parts. And uh, the Lindy couple that we're understudying, Ryan and Jenny, are going to be the couple on the road. And there are two or three other participants in the, in the road tour that have done the show now. So that helps me a lot um, because the learning curve for a specialty is so long. It's like a mm. four-week learning curve at the, at the least. And then it, you know, takes even Leaves. another four <laughs> weeks to, you know, become really comfortable in a style. Uh, Robert Royston has been a fantastic coach. Uh, Ryan and Jenny have been fantastic. I have a wonderful dance, Catherine Rod McCune, who has really literally assimilated the styles and can teach them. Beverly Durand, who's a competition dancer. Maria Torres, who's a competition dancer. Um, we draw on them and their expertise to help us. But it's still very daunting to put together a whole new group of people. How do you decide who stays, who goes? Do you pick straws? Or <laughs> well, the thing is that I can't cannibalize the Broadway company, but some of the people were, were wanting to go anyway, so yeah. I was able to, you know, to get, gather that group of people together. Um, and, you know, then I, I found some wonderful new dancers, and I'm sure that we're going to be fine. It's just I'm so spoiled because in that initial workshop, just seeing the brilliance of these these individual couples um, and saying, oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to put that out there and you know, people will learn about all this diversity in the swing community mm. and now it's sort of like helping people to copy what they do. So it's going to be a different process actually. Well, what qualities do you look for when you're auditioning dancers? And it must have been a little bit different with swing. Did you look primarily on the resume for social dancing skills as well as the jazz ballet? Well, actually, the people that are in our show are, are, are well known. They're very well known in, in the competition field. So I had seen numerous videotapes and, and had recommendations. And so uh -huh. we, built their, we built their sections around them. Now I look for um, just extraordinarily diverse dancers because the right kind of trained dancer can assimilate the style with the right teachers. And uh, many people from the swing community don't have, you know, the training to be able to sustain eight shows a week. It's a balancing act. Mm. It's a continual balancing act. They don't have the energy to sustain eight shows a week. That's well, it's not necessarily the energy, but the, the, the ability to do both their specialty and to be in the group numbers for the rest of the show. So it's, it's um, we, we never rule out, we, we audition everybody. If a social dancer calls and says, I want to be auditioned, we always see everybody. Because, you know, some of those people have had some uh, ballet or jazz background. And, um, you know, for instance, the couple that's going out for Robert and Lorene um, are the, the present world champions. So they are trained, um, she is a trained dancer who became a competition dancer. He's, he's a competition dancer who is now trying to train to be more diverse. And who is that? Who's it's um, Gary and Lisa. I'm so embarrassed I don't know their last names. We just call them Gary and Lisa like we see Robert and Lorraine. Right, right, yes. But they're, uh, hey. they're the reigning world champions. Oh, wow. Well, so you didn't, for this show, you didn't really have to take Broadway dancers who are mainly in the jazz ballet group and, right. and swing. So you had recommendations. Yes, Nine. and then I, I combined them. I mean, there's a lot of people. There are, for instance, Beverly Duran's partner is Aldrin Gonzalez, who, who's actually never done this. Huh. But they just fit. It was just such a good fit, and they loved working together. Um, we found Carlos from um, Valle Hispanico, and he became Maria's partner. And Carlos had never really done much of, of, uh, of this type of social dancing. So, you know, there were new partnerships, and then exist existing partnerships like Ryan and Jenny who, um, of course, were, you know, the reigning champions of the Lindy. Well, what, what is your joy in directing, and what, and how do you bring that joy, if there is joy for you in directing, uh, to manipulating or choreographing other choreographers? Because I notice some of the pieces right. 
are not... Um, They're performing their own work. Right, exactly. exactly. So how do you manage all this? Well, I think it's, if you could think of architecture, maybe, as, a, as an analogy, um, is that, for instance, I'm going to take Robert and Lorene, because I had seen a, a set routine that they had done, um, and uh, it was a four-minute competition routine, and I built a context for their number. Since it is a Broadway show, and you do people do need threads of, yes. of stories and characters, that it's a it's a sort of a western dance. And Robert arrives dressed, overdressed like urban cowboy, and um, he feels self-conscious. And then he stays, and and then he puts on a magic hat, <laughs> and the magic hat enables him to to suddenly be this boffo dancer. And so what ensues is, is chunks of um, their choreography, Robert's choreography, and then she gets dizzy and amazed and she parts, and then I created a line dance behind them so that it showed that they were so magical that everyone, you know, participated in the line dance. And then Robert and I together, you know, moved around material and uh, built the arc of the of the dance, eliminated some of the more subtle moves that you would look for in a competition routine that the uh, a general audience doesn't pick up on and, and kept more of the you know the flashier kind of moves so i mean basically what i'm hearing you say lynn is that you choreographed the routines in a manner that that told the story and that it's you wove a thread of magic of swing <laughs> <laughs> well it, i it, i did feel sort of i'm sort of more the storyteller utilizing the the wonderful amazing work that that they've you know, honed for 10 years as couples. And so it was a collaboration between my expertise and dramaturgical skills and their material. Well, that's lovely. I noticed, too, in the playbill that you say your greatest accomplishment is your son. Now, <laughs> is he a dancer as well? No, he is a, uh, um international relations student. Uh -huh. and. Um, He's working in Washington at the moment at a place called Center for Public Integrity. We're very happy that these things exist, a private foundation. And he will be completing his last year as an honor student in, um, in this coming year. As an honor student? Yes, well, he is. Yeah. How did he manage to get in his studies if he was sitting on his mommy's hip <laughs> while she choreographed shows? He literally did. Uh, actually, um, I come more from the concert world, uh, interestingly. Concert I world. do, yes. And so I have many pictures in different, uh, you know, my spine is very twisted <laughs> because I had him literally on my hip uh, at times. Um, we, you know, he traveled the world with me. He went to Japan, you know, several times with me. And um, I think his interest in cultures, he is bicultural as well, but it's... Um, that he has seen the world and he he does love the world of of um of travel and um then he he just found himself drawn to that as a profession so you say concert world do you mean like uh like ballet concerts yeah american or? ballet theater new york city ballet i've worked for um, numerous regional companies and uh canada and mainly united states and canada and some uh, europe so it sounds like you have a very heavy uh Ballet and jazz, a yeah. very strong foundation in dance. Yes, I do. Oh. I, I was actually, one of my first jobs was um, as, as what we would call the white token at the time in the Alvanili Company. I was one of ten. And the I white was the, token, I, I was the white token. I get it. <laughs> and very lucky. I mean, I learned so much about movement and about honesty and acting uh, through that experience and through also touring Africa with Alvin, which was, you know, extraordinary for someone in my position as a young dancer. So I, I felt very blessed for that experience.